Hi, this video is a demonstration of the different multiple choice options in the Formatize Form Builder. So on the left hand side is the toolbox. I'm going to go down and expand the multiple choice section and then I'm going to bring up the different options into the form. So we've got check boxes, radio buttons, drop downs and standard buttons. And you can move and rearrange these into different orders once they're in the form by literally dragging and dropping. Okay, so Although they all achieve a similar result, they have their own characteristics which make them work better in different scenarios. With radio buttons, first of all, you've got the ability to show the user all of the different options. So they can be single words, they can be paragraphs, but the benefit of it is that the user can see all of the different options very clearly. The other characteristic of radio buttons is you can only select one. So only one option can be chosen. So automatically formatize gives you yes, no, or not applicable. To change those, I go over to the right hand side of the field settings section, and I can either delete the options and add new ones, or I can edit by double clicking over it. And I might change that to pass instead of yes, and fail instead of no. and we'll leave non-applicable, that might still apply. So now the options are, and I'll change the question to inspection result. Okay, so the question is inspection result, it's either pass, fail, or not applicable. Down the bottom in the items section, you can see there's a gray area. That's where the action items are added. So if I want to add something else like not inspected, then I type that in at the bottom and then hit add and that will bring it into the list. If I want to reorder, then I can drag and drop and move to rearrange that order. Or if I want the responses to be in alphabetical order, then I can hit sort alpha and that will move those responses into alphabetical order. Okay, if I move back to the question now, I can see that that's all updated in the form as well. Fail, not applicable, inspected or pass. Okay, so that's radio buttons. The next one is drop downs. Now drop downs is very similar in that with a drop down you can only select one result, but it saves space. So it's not displaying all of the available options. And I can see here that I've got options yes, no, and not applicable also available in the drop down. Now with a drop down, we encourage you to keep the dash at the top. I'm not sure if you can see that on the screen, but there's a dash at the top because in that way, the answer won't default to the first response. It will default to a dash and the user will be forced to enter a result. If I delete the dash, then it will default to yes. And you can see in the form it's defaulting to yes. And that may well be something that's missed when the form is being completed. So add the dash back in. I hit the dash and hit add and move that to the top. So that's the default answer. and. Uh, that will work much better for you in drop down responses. Okay, the next one is check boxes. So check boxes are very similar to radio buttons in how they look. The biggest difference is that you can select multiple options. So in this case, we might have um, the question might be select color and size. Apologies for my typing. Okay, and then the options will be uh, color, first of all, blue or red. And then the size options will be large or small. I select add, that brings them in. Now, you can see that the dash is at the top, but it doesn't really, it's not needed within a checkbox because you can see all of the options. So I'm going to delete the dash in this case. And that just cleans it up to only show the available options. But here the user can select the color blue and select the size uh, large or small. So that's the difference between radio buttons and checkboxes. And then finally, we've got buttons and these are colored buttons and they, they're not only really uh, clear for the app user to fill and respond to, but they also appear as colored buttons in the custom uh, in the PDF that's generated from the report. So the it really stands out as something that's very obvious, particularly when you want those pass fail type questions to be answered. Now to edit the color, you, you click on the color, 
once to edit the word click twice. So there's, I've double clicked to change the wording or I click on the color to change the color and just select a different color from within the wheel to update that. If I want to add a new option, again, something like not inspected, I can add that, hit add, and then change the color to uh, orange, for example. So there we are, that's the different colored buttons. Okay, now one important thing, I guess we'll go through the different settings just so you're aware of what the, the settings on the right hand side do. Uh, the object name, you don't need to use that unless you're referring to it or building a large form if you want to uh, make it identifiable. So that might be inspection result, just so when you're searching for it, you can find it very easily, especially if you're doing any kind of integrations. Visible means is the field visible in the form or not? And we'll come back to explain how that can be used. Visible on status means that that field will only be visible if the status is, of the form is complete, for example. So that's a really handy way of, of using for like office only use sections. So the form is completed, that section won't be visible until it has a status of accepted and then an office only use section might appear in the form to be completed and added. And in the same way you can hide different sections of the form on a certain status. Button, you can, if you've selected or dragged in a checkbox, you can change it to something else by changing the type. Question obviously is where you enter the question. Required makes the field mandatory. So the user must complete that question or, or not be able to submit it. Locked means that the answer cannot be changed. Uh, there's also a web form option. So there's certain fields like the CRM lookup that you don't want them to have access to. So that can be locked if, they're, if you're using web forms. Ignore if hidden means that any of the rules that are applied, uh, they will not apply if that section of the form is hidden. And I'll come back and show you what hidden means in just a moment. One of the powerful, two of the powerful fields for drop downs and multiple choice questions in general is the ability to allow other. So in this case, and then we've got yes, no, not applicable and not inspected. If you allow other, it enables the user when they're completing a form to add an additional option themselves. And there's many cases where that's really powerful, but in, in inspections, for example, you might have a list of standard responses or paragraphs that you use, but then you might want to add an additional paragraph for a specific instance. And so that allow other will enable you to add an additional element that will then be added to that section. Now, if that additional element added will be useful in the future, you can save it. So as you add that additional item, it will also be saved. And that means that your library or your drop down of comments grows over time as you're adding additional comments into that section. So allow other allows another response. Save other means that response will then be saved for future uses of that form. Okay, copy two will bring uh, information from one field to another and linked list will enable you to pull information in from standard drop downs. The items we've talked about, you add the information into the gray box at the bottom and then hit add to bring it up into the items and then the sort alpha rearranges the items into alphabetical order. Appear in PDF means that if you don't want a certain question to appear in the final PDF, then you can deselect that and that, that particular field won't appear when the PDF is generated. Okay, so there are the four different types of radio buttons and how they're applied and the different scenarios. I just wanna show you one more thing with regard to events while we're looking at multiple choice. And there is a separate video on events, but it's quite commonly used with multiple choice questions. So I just wanna show you how that works. I'm going to grab a text box field now and drop it down to the bottom. And that will be, I'll change the question there to add additional comments. And then I'm also gonna grab uh, a camera from the advanced features and drop that in and I'll change that to take supporting photo. Okay, next thing we're going to do is click on that add additional comments 
and deselect the visible. So now it's invisible. And I'm also going to do the same with the take supporting photo. Click on that and make that invisible too. All right, so I've added two new questions, add additional comments and take supporting photos, but I've made them both invisible. And the reason for that is I only want those fields to appear if a certain response is given in the multiple choice question. So I'm gonna go back up to my inspection result, click on that. And now when I move across to the field settings, I can see that next to the properties button at the top is an events option. So I'm gonna click on events. Okay, now this enables either complete sections of forms to appear or not appear. It also enables um, individual fields to appear or not appear based on certain events. So I'm gonna just give you an example of how that can be used here. In the inspection, it's got inspection result. If the inspection result answer is fail, then I want these additional new fields to appear. So I'm going to grab the make visible and drag it on to add additional comments. And I'm also going to, I want that camera to appear as well. So I'm gonna hit, if it is fail again, I'm also going to say, make the photo field appear. Okay, so now when the user is completing the form and they hit fail on that question, the two fields at the bottom, add additional comments and take supporting photos will now appear and I want those to be mandatory. So I'm going to select that additional comments and go back and hit required. The photo isn't required, but I definitely want the additional comments. So I'm gonna make the additional comments field required. Okay, so that's events. And there are lots of other ways that events can be used. Like I say, you can make fields visible. You can also make them invisible. You can make them uh, required they, where they must be answered or not becomes optional. And you can also set values. So in that case, I might, I might want to add a value of one. And in the same way, I'm going to say, if the answer to that question is fail, then I want to set a score of one. And I would have a separate field down here that's keeping a score. So that, that will record a score of one against that failed result. You can then add those up and get a, a, an overall score of fail points for a report. So lots of different ways that uh, set values can be used. They can bring in paragraphs of text, for example. If a particular result is given, then a, a certain amount of text is populated into fields and all that sort of thing. Lots and lots of capability. Now, separate to the multiple choice, and there is a separate video on events, but I just wanted you to be aware of it and how it can work, because often it does link to the multiple choice options. Okay, thanks very much for your time.